everybody, it's Trudy here from It's a True Story. I'm here today with the biggest get ever for It's a True Story, um, which is my friend Chris Brogan. And it's the biggest get ever, because if you don't know Chris, all his stuff is gonna be down below. Um, so click it, because he's a major, for lack of a better word, thought leader. Um, but that's not even it. I mean, because that doesn't really, he's the most helpful guy around. I've been taking his advice for many years in business and in real life too. And this is a big gift for me because I have been doing a practice that Chris espouses, pioneered, teaches. One of Chris's techniques called three words. And that's, it's a thing to do to welcome in the new year. And it's not goal setting. There's some stats that say like, you know, New Year's goals of like 98%, you're gonna not do it, right? Something like that. Chris, tell me a little bit more about you and about uh, why hashtag my three words, hashtag my three words is a thing that everybody who watches this needs to do immediately. Hi, Trudy. So <laughs> in 2006 is the first time I did it. And I, I just made a blog post called my three words for 2006. And I, I explained, and it was on January 1, which is when we do it, where we sort of unveil. Um, and what I said in the, in the processing was that there's, there's a few things that go on. We do resolutions. And like you said, 90 something percent of them don't survive past January 20. Mm -hmm. And partly because a lot of times resolutions are on that uh, bucket pile called should. And I like to tell people all the time that should means won't right. think about it. I should eat a lot more broccoli. Well, yeah. should means won't. You're not going to eat any more broccoli. No. Yeah. Not unless somehow they make really awesome broccoli french fries. And that's mm. not happening anytime soon. The other thing people come up with is their one word. And I've had, I, I have the weirdest philosophical arguments with people about this. And they're like, I'm only going to do what? I'm like, that's awesome. But that's like saying, you know, I'm going to go become an orchestra player who plays the jug band, you know, poop, 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 blows in a jug. You're not in an orchestra because orchestras are string based, you know. So pick a different word if you want. Right. So three words, because I'm obsessed with the ideas of navigation. I'm obsessed, obsessed with the concept that they always say the map is not the territory. It's one of those cliches, especially in like life coaching and stuff. The map isn't the territory. Well, there's two ways to, to, to think about that. The, the one way is that you have to realize that the world changes around you and that, that things move and that, you know, what you're, anytime you kind of seek permanence, that thought is the problem permanence is a challenge it's right. not it's not meant to exist you know our world lives because of entropy mm -hmm. so three words is a way to navigate because you, you need three points to navigate right and it allows you to pack three concepts into your head at any given time to say if i were to use these three words to 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 i don't know throw sticks so to speak and and plot out how should i take an action here what's what way could I define my way forward? That's what three words does. So what I did the very first year I did it, there were very simple words, ask, do, and share. And so you go, well, so how do you, what'd you do with that? Like, right. you know, that doesn't even sound like enough to think about. Ask, I ask people questions all the time. I was writing posts, I, uh, 2006, September, 2006, I launched an international event called PodCamp. But when I launch it, it's not international. It's in one place, Bunker Hill Community College. I ask all kinds of people that I don't have any permission to reach. Do you want to come to this event? Mm. I said, yes. So I asked, I started an event. I did. Uh, we, is a for one second. I just yeah. want to shine a little less spotlight on that. That yeah. was 2006. Like podcasts mm. are the thing now, right? Can you guys, you know, think about when, who even knew what it was? Tw I definitely was not listening nerds. To and nerds. So you're asking somebody, about something that no one really knows what it is yet, really. I and mean, YouTube had come out in 05. And YouTube, I mean, look, I, I spoke to Albert Cheng once, who was the head of ABC Di uh, Digital Interactive, which was basically ABC and Disney said, we got to figure out what we're doing because there's all this new internet stuff and we're, we don't have a foot in it. And he looked at YouTube as the same thing that they already owned, which was America's Funniest Home Videos. In his mind, YouTube was only a place where you showed your kid falling down the stairs. But we were reaching out to people who were making the internet's first wave of shows who, who also maligned YouTube. They were using all the other platforms of the time, the sort of Vimeos, Viddlers, uh, Bl uh, uh, Blip TV, which doesn't exist. A whole bunch of these things are gone now. To make show shows, like they were making in internet video, like Rocket Boom was the first big, big show like that. And it was, we asked those people, back to three words, we asked, 
hey, hosts of Rocket Boom, want to come to our dumb little event? And they were like, absolutely. Mm. We're so honored you asked. Like, I never would have done that before. You know, any of the years before, I wouldn't have had the chutzpah to say, hey, big name, come. Those people were influencers. Like The biggest. Like, could you imagine calling up Kim Kardashian today and being like, can you come to my thing at Bunker Hill Community College, you and girl? It'd be like, what? But what? that's no. just all. So these three words helped you be at the precipice of, you know, gave you some some mojo to go do something really unique. So I started blogging in 98 when it was called journaling, but I always told people it took me eight years to get my first 100 readers. And because nobody was reading blogs way back when I started, and it's just like a bunch of weirdos were doing it and it was called journaling. Right. Um, but in 05, again, another ask, which is why I picked the word for 2006, um, I was, so there's lifehacker.com, which everyone knows, and there's lifehack.org, which is kind of the is Pepsi okay uh, version of this. And I was really a big fan of lifehack.org at the time. And the guy said, hey, I'm going on vacation. I need, I need somebody to kind of like take over and write for me while I'm on vacation. And I said, I'm in. And he had known my name from the comments section. And so he just gave me the keys and let me write posts for him. And when he came back, he was like, oh, you can hand it back. And I said, no, I think I'm going to keep writing for you. And he was like, oh, um, OK. And so he, he didn't he didn't understand why. And then I leveraged that into my first real audience, you know, similar to some other girl I know who, you know, was doing her thing, but gets invited to be in a big thing. And then I was able to sort of transfer some brand value to me. So ask, do, and share. Share was I was posting and publishing everything. And, and when I became sort of most known back in the way old days, it was like, man, this guy, Chris Brogan, shares everything he's doing, good yeah. and bad. He shares his failures all the time. All the time. So my three words worked so well in 06. That's why it became a thing all the rest of my life. And so, you know, just, just the thing about the words, it's not just words. Like lose some weight is never going to be your three words. That's right. First of all, you're you're wasting a word, right? It's like some. It's a. It's not that it's a non-goal goal thing, but it's like really you're picking words. And I take a long time to pick my words. I've been I have been doing this practice probably since the beginning. Actually, this is why I'm saying the idea that I'm friends with Chris now is amazing to me because I've been doing it for many years, and it's it's a game changer. I'm looking over the other years, so I, I keep a list. So so if you Google my three words. You're going to find me like in the first few answers. Oddly, not number one. I don't know why. And and you can read through my old ones. And I can tell you just looking at which years, like 2007, which is the second year I did it, I picked four words and it sucked. Um, 2008 was pretty good. 2009 was super good. And then 2010 was my best business year ever. And my words there were ecosystems, owners, and kings. Ecosystems was don't just do things try to put it into sort of an ecosystem so it all makes sense when people come and look at who you are. Um, when I worked with Brian Clark on Third Tribe, it was uh, me, Brian, and Darren Rouse. And the whole concept was just that, you know, here are these three like really known blogger types yeah. partnering to say, man, there's some juice in here. And we did this. Oh my gosh. It was, this is again, heyday Brogan. So this is like just paychecks getting flown over the wall from all the people coming and showing up. I was just making bags of money. And I'm not anymore, which is why I could talk about this so so boldly because now I'm like broke. But it, it was amazing because I was just like, this is this is an ecosystem. This makes sense. I did it. So owners and kings, you know, the kings thing, I got this piece of advice from Marsha Collier. Um, as people know about things like internet trolls, uh, you know, it's so easy to want to get in and fight with internet trolls. It's, um, in, in my kind of Buddhism, there's a, a, a term called Shempa. And the best way to look at it is basically a fish hook and you can choose to bite the hook or you can let the hook go right by. Kings was Marsha Collier. We're riding back and forth between an event. We're in a cab somewhere at, uh, before Uber existed at CES in Las Vegas. And she turns to me and Marsha's just beautiful and like lovely and stately. And she says, Chris, you just have to stop doing that. We must be kingly. We must be kingly. Wow. And I, I felt that all the way through me. It was like every molecule in my body got pulled away. She replaced it with new molecules and there was before that sentence and after that sentence. One of those moments. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that you might not get your three words right the first time, but don't change them mid-flow. Just kind of see what you can do with the word for the year because the word isn't everything. The word is how you power the word. I mean, the way I mean, I'll, I'll share how I use my three words and I'll give you my 
last last year's words were smarter, ease, and play. So I have a, like an old family expression, like if there's an easy way or a hard way, we're going the hard way. Let's go. And I had a lot going on this year. I just finished a two-year course learning how to be a meditation teacher. I have the YouTube stuff, all sorts of things. And it was like, that's my litmus test. Like, is there, am I, am I taking it away forward? That's going to bring in some delight, which is what to me smarter, which is just, you get your time's valuable, work smarter. Ease. Does this feel easy to do? If it feels hard, either midstream, just say, ah, you know what, actually I'm out. Or if there's, you know, even the hard stuff I did, that word reminded me that I wanted to do what I'm doing, which made it, it, it eased it on down. Right. So I'm memory, you know, memorizing Sanskrit. That was a big part of this year. It's really hard. That's like a dead language and it's not my first language. When I hit those, those, those moments where I'm like, this is so hard. I can't do it. I reminded myself like, what's, what's going to ease that through. It's like, I actually love what I'm doing. So it made it so much easier. It worked. And play is one that like I put on there, like I want to play more and be more playful in my work and life and i don't know that one i can't say that that one really the one of the three like i can't say that i felt a lot of playful moments so i don't know but i'm also not judging it it's like it was in there because it's all a part of it like and actually if i think about it a lot of the ways that i got through the work that i had to do the memorization work was to play little games in my head the thing about your three words it's not just that i'm doing this on january one and on january two right. i just forgot what they were it's like these things become a mantra. This is a, a double secret, awesome thing. Chris Brogan is on my show and he is my friend this year. All brand new. We just kind of made the connections and we have some people in call, common like Brian Clark. Um, Further.net, which I've never promoted on here, but it's aimed at Gen Xers. Tell your mom and dad, kids. So through various projects, we kind of knew each other. That's how Chris and right. I got to talking. But the real way we got in touch was that I tagged Chris. I, I made a video last year. I'll put the link down below about my three words. Um, mm -hmm. And I hashtag my three words and I tag Chris um, on Instagram. And then he was like, hey girl, we know each other. Do we know each other? I know you from React. And that's how that worked. But it was through this my three words thing. So that's kind of the magic. So that's the have. kindest version of telling that story ever. Because what Trudy's also saying is that we've known each other for years, but I just didn't put it all together in my head until last year. And I was like, wait a minute. To me, there's more than one Trudy, it turned out, but uh, you were all the same one. It's Chris, on January 1, he's going to drop his three words for 2021. Mm -hmm. And so that's on chrisprogram.com, right? Yeah. So you just swing by chrisprogram.com, scroll down a little past the businessman stuff and you know, you'll see where it looks like it should yeah. be. I'll probably make a little video this year because I've been just making so much more video as well. But but the other way to do it is, you know, uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, just use the hashtag my three words and my the number three words. And uh, I'm always out there looking for it. There was a, uh, I wrote a bunch of books and one of the books I wrote was um, Trust Agents with Julian Smith. And he wrote this part. What's funny about the book is that my parts all make perfect sense to me. His parts make sense to him. Some of my parts, he just rolls his eyes. Some of his parts, I just sit there and go, I'm not smart enough to know what you wrote here, Julian. He goes, would you, rather, would you rather be a room or a hallway? And I was like, that's a stupid question. That's a, I hate that question because I didn't get it. You know, and what do we do when we hate, don't get things? We hate them. Um, I said, you want to be a room? Like, you don't ever say, I'm going to invite you to my hallway. You don't have like Thanksgiving dinner in the hallway. He goes, nope. I'd hallway. be a hallway. That was my be a hallway because you want to connect to all the things and you want to be the through place that people go, oh, I learned this thing. And so it's the through story um, mm. that the hallway is things like hashtags where I can connect and learn from other people and not be the destination of my stupid blog post. My post is the least interesting part of my three words. The most interesting part is getting to know you. Yeah. Well, listen, that's a perfect way to end because what are you guys doing sitting around here? Start, get, get your out. three words, go and put it on the social and tag Chris, tag me. I'm, I want to know. I love this exercise. And I think it's a great way to start your year. I want to thank Chris Brogan so much for taking his time to share like his double secret, most awesome exercise of the year, my opinion, keeping it. And so what are you waiting for? Like, go get that done. Yeah, I'll wait. See you guys later. Bye.